We are used to counting to 10. Our numeric system is based 10 and we have 10 fingers and toes. But our seconds and minutes are 60. Hours are 12 in the day and 12 in the night. We have 12 months in a year. And we order our eggs in 12s. Well, this is all connected in some way or another, and it has something to do with counting, specifically how one of the oldest civilizations in history did it. So, how the dozen become so important? And what the heck is a baker's dozen? We should start by looking at the way we currently count. Picture yourself counting. If you think about it, counting to 10 is completely natural. We as humans come built in with a counting machine in the form of fingers. We have 10 of them, 20 if you count your toes. So we didn't have to overthink it in order to make it the base of many of our systems. But as natural as it may seem, our current counting system is relatively new. Its wide adoption is less than 500 years old. What we call just numbers is actually called the Indo-Arabic numeral system. It has that name because of its origin, which is this region in India, which later came into Muslim control and that helped it spread throughout the many Arab kingdoms. After a couple of centuries of peaceful cultural exchange, the system made it into Europe in the 12th century and began to look like the numbers that we know and love today. By the 15th century, it was already widely adopted. That's all fine and nice, but it doesn't explain the use of the dozen. Well, for that, we'll have to go further back. Like, 5,000 years back. City of Babylon, 639 B. Later, should. This is Mesopotamia, which was located in modern Iraq, Kuwait, and parts of Iran and Syria. Along these rivers flourished the first civilizations in history, that we know of at least. These civilizations were also the first ones to have written language, and they documented everything in these clay tablets. And did you know what they liked to document a lot? Trading. And to document trading you need to have, well, numbers a numeral system, math calculations, and all that funny stuff. So, they invented those. Babylonian cuneiform numerals are one of the first ones that we have a record of. But it was not base 10 like the one that we're familiar with. It was base 60. You may think, well, that doesn't sound natural and it looks very complicated. I don't have 60 fingers, how am I to keep track of that? Well, here's the genius part and what it is believed to have happened. If you look at your hand, each finger is divided into three different bones. So, if you use your thumb as a pointer and start counting them, eventually you'll get to 12. Not only that, use your second hand to keep track and you'll be able to count up to 60 with just your hands and a little math. This 60 number system was widely adopted through all of Mesopotamia and being the first at this civilization thing has some perks. You get to be the first one to figure out things like calendars, units of measure and natural observations. And as the first ones to measure time, this is the reason we have 60 seconds in a minute and another 60 of these in an hour, even if those were not commonly used until the 16th century at least. Conveniently, Babylonians and Egyptians also divided the day into 24 hours, with the latter also dividing it into two 12-hour parts for night and day. See? 12. Like the number that you can count with one hand? Now, here's another thing. If you look at the lunar cycle, you'll see that there are 12 lunar cycles per year, 12 cycles of 30 days each. So the best way to document a year would be to take into account these cycles in a year, right? Well, you got yourself a calendar there, one with 12 months and 30 days each. Familiar? And this was not exclusive to them. Many civilizations noticed this too and gave the number 12 a very important meaning. So, it is not a coincidence that the Babylonians stuck to 60 then, because these numbers, 12 and 30, and even 360, are all factors of it in some way. Oh, yeah, the 360 degrees that we know and love about their circles can also find its way back to them. Okay. Grab a circle, divide it into 6 equilateral triangles and later subdivide those in 60 parts. Now you have a degree for each of those, and 360 in total. Suddenly, we have a unit of measure to map stars, On the world, planet. navigate, erect complex buildings, and even more. ...how these great burial monuments were built, we just don't know for sure. So... This is very nice to know, Babylonians were completely awesome. 
But the last Babylonian king fell more than 2,500 years ago. How did we get from there to here? Well, we don't know. But we can make some educated guesses. Yes, Mesopotamia was very influential at the time and many civilizations, including them, left written records about math, commerce, astrology, navigation, and so on. That doesn't explain how it stuck, but if we pay close attention, throughout history, empires have shown to be very good at two specific things, expanding and collapsing. When Babylon fell, it was conquered by the Persian Empire, which was conquered by the Greeks, which was conquered by the Romans, which collapsed and gave birth to Europe, which eventually colonized half the globe. So, in all that expanding and collapsing thing, elements of knowledge and traditions get passed into the next thing that comes. The Pyramid Age. Twelve being a very noticeable thing in nature, plus our culture's ancestry, that could have made us lean towards the Dawson. And it's not only the cultural and historical aspect of it, 12 is actually a very convenient number. And here's why. Divided into five congruent parts are fifths. We are very used to divide whole things into fraction of things. We use a half, a quarter, a third, and so on. Now, if we try to divide 10 in those fractions, you get this. 5 is a nice whole number, yeah, but this is just another fractional number. And look at this. What is this? This is unusable. Oh my god, I hate you. But if we try to divide 12 in the same way, we get this. Beautiful and whole numbers. Numbers that we can simply use in the real world. With real applications, like baking and choosing eggs. So, the dozen. Maybe it is a combination of history and convenience, a tradition that did not die even when we adopted a different numeral system. Maybe it's none of those things. But one thing remains true. The Baker's dozen is not even a dozen. It's actually 13, and I hate that. Bakers in 13th century England didn't want to be punished for just making shitty bread, so they ended up just adding one more. Then, why is it called a dozen? Why continue to call it a dozen when it is not? I hope that you enjoyed that video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you are not subscribed already. I'll continue uploading more stuff like this. Uh, leave me in the comments what would you like me to cover next. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are amazing things coming. So, yeah. Um, Thanks!